Okay, now that we've got the fixed endpoints programmed into here, we're going to go back into Castle Link and uh, connect to the ESC. So here we go, I'm going to plug in the Castle Link right now. Okay, USB connection status is perfect, exactly the way it should be. So now, plug my ESC into the Castle Link. And now provide power to the ESC because I've got an HV. If you don't have an HV, if it's just a regular ICE, uh, you should be able to connect to the device at this point. So provide power. Now we're all set up here. Uh, device connection status is green. Now we're going to do, for the throttle type here, instead of fixed endpoints, we're going to go to governor mode. Actually, a, a good thing to do just to start out is uh, put it back into the defaults. Uh, now we're going to go to helicopter, governor mode. Uh, so we're going to set our own RPM and then when you do that this uh, little window should pop up. If not, make sure you go down to the defaults, do this first, otherwise uh, you won't go through such an easy menu for uh, programming your settings. So we're going to click OK. We're going to come in here our setup, we're, I'm using LiPo batteries, nominal voltage 3.7, and I'm actually using 12 in series. So I'm uh, doing a 12 cell setup, 44.4 volts. Okay. Okay, pinion I'm using, 15 over here. Uh, number of teeth on my main gear is 170. And alternatively, you can just enter the gear ratio instead. KV of the motor, we already went and learned that at readyheli.com uh, looking at, and we know that our motor in itself is a 630. Uh, we also found at Ready Heli that we have eight poles in this motor, and we wrote that down here as well. If you don't know this information, you can usually find it on the specifications for whatever your equipment is. Click OK. And then these other settings, right now I'm not going to talk about the auto-rotate enable. Uh, we're just going to do a, a regular setup with governor mode, and we're just going to have a, a normal throttle cut. Uh, otherwise, auto-rotate enabled, you can set it up so that you have a throttle cut, but it still maintains a little bit of head speed so that you don't have to spool up slowly. I personally like a nice slow spool up rate. I'm going to go to a custom of three. Head speed rate change. You know, this is also, it, it describes, uh, you know, exactly that, the rate of change from one head speed to another. I'm just going to have, you know, 50 between my three settings, so a medium rate change will be good. If you're doing auto rotation, they say to start out somewhere between 10 and 14, uh, but right now we're just going to do 5. And we're going to type in our desired head speeds. Let's see, we're going to do 1950 try for 2000 here which was a recommendation on dark horse and then for a little bit more head speed we'll 2050 and if it's outside of uh, the acceptable range this uh, is going to change colors like here if I have a 1500 see how it turns red and then you can figure out why it's like 67 percent uh, efficiency you know you, you don't want to be operating at that point they say say in the instructions the recommendations is between 90 and 92 percent I think it'll allow you to go a little higher uh, but I try to keep it within the recommendations for my basic setup so 1950 puts us at 87.8 percent that's a little less but it's acceptable here we're at 90 this is right in the ideal range um, at the 2050 a little outside on the upper side but it's, it's not giving me any warnings if I put a really high head speed or something in here you know it'll tell me you know I'm at 99 percent full power so it's it's not going to be very efficient and it doesn't really fit with uh, my gearing ratio so 2050 is a perfect little spot for me make sure we've got all these things set up governor gain uh, this is one thing that's been uh, you know, debated many times on the internet. Some people swear by a low gain. 
you can either start out low and try and if you start getting head your head speed bogging then you might want to bump it up if you see like chattering or your tails wagging you might want to bump it down you can either try it that way or you can just set it high at first and click it down one click at a time until you have no wagging or chattering uh, right now I'm just going to start in this example start with the low 15 and then make sure we update over here click update okay break oh one thing it also says here uh, use a flat 30 throttle curve for this RPM so in your normal mode you're gonna have 30 30 30 all the way across uh, for your stunt one 70 percent all the way across for your stunt two 100 percent all the way across and that's what will give you these different head speeds for me I do zero 30 30 30 30 so I can start out with low stick have it in normal mode and then spool up and then get to this head speed at first it's just a matter of personal preference break you're not going to really change anything here cutoffs uh, we know I, I, I like to just go with the auto lipo if you want to pick a specific voltage for the whole thing to cut off that's up to you I prefer the auto lipo at 3 volts per cell uh, with the setup I'm doing is a 12 cell T-Rex 600 so it's not going to pull a lot of current if you've got like 160 amp ESC and you might need to pull you know 140 amps turn it to insensitive I'm just going to have it at normal and cut off we don't want a hard cut off we want it to be soft um, make sure we update status again over here at the motor I just do the medium default start power timing I do the normal five as well direction forward uh, if it's not spooling up in the right direction you can just swap uh, two of the motor wires or you can change this in the programming it's up to you I'm running an outrunner motor um, some people have tried different you know pulled with modulation rates uh, and you know some people I've seen actually eight kilohertz I think on this motor and, and they get some efficiency you don't want to burn up your motor um, but check the recommendations and try other PWM rates at your own risk. I'm going to make sure I update this. Go to the other. I want the power on beep enabled. For the logging, I just log everything. You know, whatever the default setups here. And software, if there's newer software for what you've got, it'll be available and you can update it here. So just make sure we got one last little update going. And then just to check and make sure we've we've got everything programmed, I'm going to come in here and read the settings. So this is going to make make you read the settings from the ESC that you've currently got. Read them successfully, and you come here, and you'll see these head speeds may have changed a little bit. You know, you may have to adjust them, but these are you know close enough to what I was going for. Uh, everything's set up the way I had it: governor mode, brake, cutoffs, motor, other, all that stuff. So it looks like we're all programmed and all set to go. Now I'm going to unplug the power first from the ESC. You don't want to, at this point, unplug the USB because you've got power going to the ESC. So it's, and chances are your transmitter's off. So whatever your default sticks were in the transmitter, if you just unplug the USB now, it's going to arm and set up in that mode. So you don't want to just unplug the USB. Make sure first you unplug the power okay and then the device connection is going to go away and then at that point you can unplug the USB